Greetings, the Astro 30 here. Now, I'm revisiting this TPA3122D digital amplifier, which if you saw in the previous video, well, uh, basically the IC shit itself. That's probably because it was running close to its maximum VCC voltage of 30 volt. Um, it was actually running at around about 31.6 and probably eventually killed the chip. So, I'm going to retest it again because I've got a new replacement IC. Now, I did some research and apparently that random oscillation I was seeing on the output is actually normal. That's the switching pilot frequency, so it's just not properly filtered out the output. It is a significant amount of voltage coming out the output, however, but I guess when it's loaded down, it's not going to be as significant to the speaker. It should be well above, you know, 30 kilohertz. So shouldn't affect the speaker so what I'll do is I'll pop the new IC in have the new one it's cost me about six dollars plus five dollars odd postage so yeah for a kit that was about ten dollars in the first place this was an expensive learning curve now just looking at the difference between these two chips I don't know how well you can see that but they come from a different manufacturer the printing's different so hmm okay bastard Okay, so now we insert the new chip around the correct way. Uh, that should be that way around. I think that's where the notch is supposed to be. Yes, it is. My big head's probably in the way right now. I still haven't got myself an IC insert at all. And very well probably should. Right, that new IC's in. So... That's done. So I thought with all the test equipment still already hooked up and, you know, on the desk here um, from a previous video, I thought I would uh, have another look at this amplifier itself um, just to see. I don't know why I did that. I just stuck a dead chip in the uh, foam that came with the new one, even though that chip's rooted. Okay. Uh, anyway, I, I thought I would uh, revisit it and test it with a new IC and just see... Um, what the results are. I'm going to run it at 20 volt instead of 30 volt, so that'll be the first order of business. So let's get set up and started and see what we get. The reason I'm revisiting this is because you guys know me, I don't really like leaving things half finished or not working correctly for any particular reason um, or let a problem piss the hell out of me until. <laughs> I decide to fix it so we're going to uh, power this up and have a look at the output on the scope so there's the scope uh, turn the load on now this time I don't see anything on the output and I have roughly 20 milliamps of current draw so interestingly there is no oscillation on the output that there was there before so that's uh, interesting I still can't see any output though with the blurt test so let me uh, hook up the audio source all right when all else fails check the other channel so I'll remove that swap these leads around and still nothing on the output. Nothing at all. Hmm. We've got absolutely no output. None. None. Well, this is fucking annoying. Well, that is very, very annoying. There's no, there's no output. I can't do anything. There's no output. It's a brand new IC. Okay, I'll turn the power off. I'm going to change, change back the ICs again. Maybe that IC isn't dead. I don't know, I didn't retest really it properly. Whoa. That IC's dead. Well, strangely enough, after Unplugging the IC and plugging it back in again, we now have an output. Clipping badly only because I've got the amplitude set to 3 volts, so I'll change that back to 1 uh, 
bolt. Now, yeah, it still looks like absolute crap. So let's wind the uh, amplitude down and see if it uh, corrects out to a nice even sinusoidal waveform. We're about 300 millivolt, and that looks like absolute shit. Look how noisy that is. But it is outputting. I'm surprised that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that there was no output before and now all of a sudden as soon as I took the chip out and put it back in it's uh, working I don't know maybe there's a bad joint right that that IC is getting fairly hot so I'm going to say that that's going to be its full output power we're drawing about 500 MA at 24 volt uh, peak output voltage peak to peak is 21.7 we'll say so I'm just going to Turn that right down to nearly nothing so we don't damage the IC. So I think these were rated at 15 watts. So that's 21.8 volt peak to peak. Divide that by 2. Gives us 10.9. Okay, square that. That's close to 100. Yep, yeah, 118. Divide that by the load impedance. We get, yeah, close to 15 watt, 14.8. So that is pretty close, but the output is noisy as hell. Look at all those switching artifacts that are on the uh, sine wave. It's not clean, and the scope is having a real hard time triggering to that. Because if we turn the amplitude right off, uh, you can see all the background noise there. If I actually disconnect the DDS, make sure it's not the DDS interfering with it. See, there's our base or pilot frequency, switching frequency. So we're looking at a peak to peak of 1.4 volt for that. And it's apparently at 1.2 kilohertz. Hmm. Alright, I suppose we'll hook it up to a speaker. I'll hook it up to that crap one down there because I don't care if that, that, that destroys itself. Um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, see what happens. Okay, the speaker is hooked up now. Even at zero volt, I can still hear that. That sounds terrible. But I can't really hear that... Um, oscillation that was there before that one kilohertz uh, pilot frequency of course my scope might not be accurate with the uh, speaker leads hooked across the oscilloscope I can hear the buzz which is circuit noise picked up by the um, audio cable uh, but we're still getting that 1.12 kilohertz pilot frequency there but I can't hear it above the noise if I um, unplug the input for that lead. That buzz goes away, but that's that uh, oscillation still there, but it's not really having any adverse effect on the speaker. So, yeah, okay, it's working. Um, I should hook it up to a sound source and see what it sounds like. So, before I do that, listen to this blurt test. Oh, it's doing it now. It was going. Um, okay, I've got it hooked into the computer and it sounds distorted as hell. Um, if I play a piece of music. Well, it sounds alright now. But it is distorted.
okay. Uh, it sounded alright. It does sound a little bit buzzy. Um, I should really check the uh, operation of the other channel now because I'm only plugged into one speaker, obviously. However, that IC is getting pretty hot, so you'd probably want to epoxy a um, heat sink onto that uh, IC to dissipate some of the heat because even Class D amplifiers require heat sinking. I don't care what anyone says, but they do. Uh, so, yeah. Now I'm going to hook up to the other channel. I'll turn it off first and uh, see if we get an output. Well, that's not right. Huh, now it's fine after I turned it off and turned it back on again. Something really weird about that circuit. I'm not liking it one little bit. However, let's play the same piece of music through it. Um, see how that sounds distorted. Anyway. Okay, what do I think of this amplifier? Well, it works. The sound's a bit mediocre, but it does work for what it is. I can't really hear any digital switching artifacts in the output, but uh, you can certainly see it on the oscilloscope. And the waveform with a one kilohertz generated sign just looks all hairy and nasty and not clean. And that IC is pretty hot. Um, so, and that's driving a 16 ohm load. I think it's only designed for a minimum of 8. Of course, I'm on the highest amount of gain too, so if I drop the gain off, because there's a dip switch here where you can select medium, low, or high. So, uh, what does concern me is when I turned it off and back on again just a minute ago, where it was going pop, 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 pop. Like that. For some reason, it won't start up straight away. Now, I'm not sure whether that's just a bad solar joint. It only seems to be on that channel, though. The other channel wasn't doing it. It's 
So I, I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, no, both channels are doing it. So I'm just wondering if it's like a bad joint, like a bad solder joint, or that the IC is going into shutdown mode for some reason. I don't know, but... It doesn't seem to want to work first time every time. I'm not really sure why. It's kind of strange. It could be it doesn't like the 16 ohm load speaker, but see now it's fine. So I, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, so as an amplifier, yeah, it works sometimes. Um, am I impressed with its quality? No, not really. Um, this TPA device is an obsolete chip anyway, so the chances of that being genuine is next to none. So, but at least I've got it working now and I've got a practical demonstration of it working plus the test measurement uh, of its uh, output capabilities. Um, but as an amplifier, no, nah, it's, it's not really good for anything. Um, it's, it's noisy, it's got a bit of distortion in it, a lot of harmonic distortion as well. And even for Class D, it's absolute crap. This is like going back to 1980 when Class D was first introduced. Um, very low power, power amps with shitloads of distortion and switching artifacts on the output and they just sounded absolutely awful. Now there's a YouTuber named 12 Volt Vids who does a lot of um, amp comparisons like class D, class A, class AB, etc. And he says the same thing, that a lot of the earlier class D amplifiers sound like absolute shit. And he is right. This does actually sound like absolute shit. Um, but for what it is and what I paid for it, like uh, 10 or 11 bucks, I think it is, it does work. But what concerns me is when you power it off, and you go to power it back on, you get that uh, oscillation, um, motorboating, whatever you want to call it. And I'm not sure what's causing that, and it's kind of annoying the piss out of me now, but yeah, it is what it is. See, I don't get it. It's, it's just strange. Um, I'm not going to connect up to my desktop speakers uh, and risk blowing them up. As I say, the speaker on the floor is an old... 1970 speaker, so I don't really give a shit if it does blow up. But it will not... It will not start. However, it could be the oscilloscope loading the output down. No. I can't make it start, so I'm not sure what the hell's going on here, but I might back the voltage off to back to 20 and see if it still does it. Apparently so. But I can't make it start. That is, that is, that is odd. That, that is really odd. Um, yeah, it's, it's just strange. And now it's fine. So you have to like turn on and off about five or six times before the damn thing works. It could be this IC too, who knows. But no, I'm not, I'm not impressed with the uh, overall performance of this thing. Um, it's just absolute crap. Um, am I disappointed that I bought it? No, it was good for a test. I just wanted to see what all the hype was about about this thing, but it, it's not the best class D amplifier I've built. And one that provides no heat sinking for its IC. Bad, 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 bad. Bad idea. Bad. 
So anyway, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, personally, I wouldn't recommend buying this particular kit. Uh, even though it's cheap, uh, you will be sorely disappointed in its results. You may not have the same problem I've got with the power off cycling with the uh, motorboating when you turn it back on. Uh, I have no idea why it's doing that. But again, it could be this uh, replacement IC. Might be dodgy as well. Who knows? But uh, if you do buy this, I would recommend running the voltage between 20 and 24, or maybe 25 at the outside maximum. Don't run it at its uh, maximum voltage of 30. You will kill the IC very quickly. Um, again, I would put a heatsink epoxy this to the uh, IC to get it to dissipate the heat, or find some way of mounting it. But um, it, it's going to need a heatsink. And that clicking it's doing when it first turns back on might be because the IC is going to the shutdown mode for overheat. Who knows? But again, I personally wouldn't buy this kit. Um, there are plenty of other Class D amplifiers out there in kit form that are use much better ICs than this one. And I built one previously, I think. Uh, can't remember offhand. I've done so much shit on this channel. I can't remember what I've done and what I haven't done. Anyhow, so that's going to be it for this video um yeah and i hope you enjoyed watching it and uh yeah we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching i'm the astro 30 and if you enjoyed this video please remember to rate comment and subscribe below and you can always follow me on facebook and twitter the links are in the description as usual also you can support me on paypal by donating as little or as much as you want because your donation allows me to buy stuff to play around with on the channel and speaking of channels Check out this guy, 12 Volt Vids. He has some great content to do with electronics on his channel. Anyway, this is the Astro 30 saying, see ya, have a great day.